once we'd separated the kinematic notions of plate tectonics from the, 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 the rest of it, we were then left with the problem of what actually maintains these motions. And the amount of energy required must be greater than the amount of energy released in earthquakes, because they're a direct consequence of the plate motions. So that sets a lower bound. You, you, ha you have to have an energy source which is greater than that. And that limits you very strongly because the, the earthquake energy release is really quite large. And so that is a requirement of any theory that it can produce enough energy to, to, to account for the earthquakes. And the only really viable mechanism of doing that is some form of mantle convection. And by that I mean simply that hot material rises, cold material sinks, and so it drives a flow. But we knew from plate tectonics that the plates themselves are very large, rigid caps. So they don't tell you very much about the circulation underneath, right? because they're moving rigidly. And the, the, the Pacific is 10,000 kilometres across. And heaven only knows from, from plate tectonics what's going on underneath it. Don't tell you anything. So the question then came, was there any method of actually looking at the mantle circulation which essentially could see through the plates and see through where things were coming up and going down? If you could make good maps of the gravity field, the long wavelength part of the gravity field, then we could actually look straight through the plates at what the circulation was doing underneath. And very fortunately, at just this time, the technology changed and some satellites were, were launched which actually measured the shape of the surface of the sea. And this measurement at the beginning was only good to about 10 centimetres and now is good to about 1 centimetre, but all we needed was about 10 metres. So we could map right, the shape of the sea surface and the sea surface is flat. Right, so when you have a, a, a positive gravity anomaly, that attracts the water to the positive gravity anomaly, and you get a bulge in the sea surface, even though the sea is actually level. Right, and that's a quite muddling notion. But you can m map the shape of the sea surface, and, and this we did, uh, and could see then the whole of the circulation, the mantle circulation, going on underneath the plates. And the really striking thing was that it was quite unrelated to the plate boundaries. The, the, the mantle convex rather like hot water in a kettle or something. And, you know, the plates just float on top. And they don't really take much notice of what's happening underneath. So we'd found out another large piece of, of you know, tectonics of the Earth, but the two didn't really connect together. So we really went back and looked rather more carefully at the forces which come about from plate production on ridges and particularly from plate destruction in the trenches when the, the plate goes back down into the mantle. And there the density contrast between the cold plate and the surrounding mantle is so large that that particular part of the convective story is quite sufficient to maintain the motions. So we, 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 we're happy that it's convection, but it's convection which is really described by the plate motions rather than by this sort of uh, flow in the interior of things welling up and going down. So we could then see the whole of the circulation underneath the, the plates, and, and it's a lot more complicated than one would guess. The, the, the distance between uh, rising and sinking regions of this sort of convection is something like 1,500 kilometres, whereas a big plate, like the Pacific, is something like 10,000 kilometres across. So there are sort of, you know, 20, 50 of these little cells all going now beneath places like the Pacific. And the only surface expression of them is in the gravity and the fact that they push the surface up and down. And that's how we could map them. So we then started to worry about the plates themselves as a convective phenomenon, because they're made at the ridges right, by upwelling stuff, then they cool, goes horizontally, and then they're subducted beneath the island arcs. Now, that motion of the cold plate downwards 
that's a convective driving force right? because it's cold and it's wanting to sink. And that driving force is quite big enough both to maintain the plates and to generate the, the, the energy in the earthquakes. 